Hey everyone, welcome back to A Word in Season with Nichelle. My name is Nichelle. Thank you guys so much for joining me on today. Um, this is going to be a quick video um, and this is not really an impromptu, uh, but when the Holy Spirit does his thing, man, I tell you, like it is such a great experience every single time for me. And so um, this word is just going to simply be um, just a, I don't want to call it a warning, um, but it's more so God letting you know for whom this word may or will concern. Um, this is something that he wants you to know per se. Um, so I'll just tell you what happened before we get into a word of prayer. So actually, we're going to pray first, okay? So Heavenly Father, thank you God so much for um, allowing us to be here together in your name, dear God. We just thank you for this opportunity, dear God, to hear your word, Almighty King. And so, dear God, I repent of everything that I've done to offend you, Almighty God. And I ask, dear God, that you will remove every single demonic hindrance, dear God. Um, that may prevent me from hearing you clearly. And I ask, dear God, that you'll have your way, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. And so, um, yeah, yesterday I was in prayer. And um, it's interesting. I read Exodus chapter 9, Exodus, Deuteronomy chapter 9. And um, I was uh, reading uh the 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 scripture verses where moses um pretty much told god like god do not kill these people if you do then the egyptians uh, are going to believe that you were um wicked in bringing the people out into the wilderness just to kill them and so uh, moses and god had that interaction and uh it, the bible says that god relented and he did not allow his anger to destroy the hebrews um, so I was praying, literally what I was praying had absolutely nothing to do with this uh, prophetic word, uh, this heads up. But God is just so good in that he loves to prepare um, his people before something actually happens. Um, and so while I was praying, uh, God put back in my spirit the conversation that him and Moses had, the exchange that him and Moses had. And so what was interesting is that when I read further down, um, Moses didn't know that God saw exactly what was happening as Moses is trying to convince God, God, your name is so great that you do not want to allow or you don't want nations to know that you were not able to do what you promised Abraham that you were going to do, right? Which is to bring your people out of Egypt and bring them into the promised land. So, <laughs> um, I'm going to go ahead and read this scripture. So, I am in Deuteronomy chapter 9. And I'm going to start at, let's see, verse 11. At the end of the 40 days and 40 nights, the Lord gave me the, the two stone tablets, the tablets of the covenant. Then the Lord told me, go down from here at once. Because your people whom you brought out of Egypt have become corrupt. They have turned away quickly from what I commanded them and have made an idol for themselves. So I want you to pay attention really, really closely to the last line that I just said. They have turned away quickly from what I commanded them and have made an idol for themselves. Okay, keep that in the forefront of your mind, okay? Uh, let's see, verse 13. And the Lord said to me, I have seen this people and they are a stiff necked people indeed. Let me alone so that I may destroy them and blot out their name from under heaven. And I will make you, Moses, into a nation stronger and more numerous than they. So I turned and went down from the mountain while it was ablaze with fire and the two tablets of the covenant were in my hands. When I looked, I saw that you had sinned against the Lord your God. So... Moses is speaking to the people. You had made for yourselves an idol cast in the shape of a calf. You had turned aside quickly from the way that the Lord had commanded you. So I took the two tablets and threw them out of my hands, breaking them to pieces before your eyes. And so this is the word that, uh, that the Holy Spirit gave to me yesterday. So a lot of times, I'm sure you guys have heard of like silent seasons where God is silent, right? Uh, Moses spent time with God up in the mountain of Mount Sinai. Um, that is where he received the Ten Commandments. And so Aaron, uh, 
he was in so many words left in charge of the people and so as i was praying uh last night and help me holy spirit god put in my spirit when i am silent in the season to come do what you have been taught up until the time in which i come to you so for example god brought back as i was praying praying into this word the hebrews had more than enough to pray to god to praise him and to worship him they literally saw the signs and wonders and miracles of the most high god that was more than enough to praise him up until moses came down from mount sinai to meet with them in other words God was so disappointed that the people that he took for himself as a nation, not only did they turn away from him, but they went ahead and made an idol. And because they were not patient in waiting for God to speak, okay, and waiting for God to show up, they went back to what they were used to. And this is the word of the Lord, okay? For some of you, this, this word is not for everyone, okay? But if you find yourself in this season, okay, please be reminded of this. Whatever it is that God has taught you up until that point, okay, that he is silent, just know that one, he wants you to continue doing what you have been taught to do. So for example, for me, I don't need God to tell me when to pray okay i know it sounds silly but like when you're starting off in your walk with christ like you know you need god to tell you what to do you get what i'm saying but when you've been walking this thing when you've been walking this thing out for as long as i have there comes a point where you do not need god to tell you what you should be doing so in a silent season what is expected of you as a believer of jesus christ read your bible Stay in his presence, okay? Seek his face, even if it may seem as though he's not answering you. Because one thing that this showed me was that even though the Hebrews did not think that God was close by, even though they think as though that the God did not answer them, that God was not speaking, God still had his eyes on his people. God was still mindful of his people. So much so that that was the reason why that God told Moses, I'm about to destroy these people, okay? Okay? Moses didn't know. Moses was on the mountain speaking with God. But because God is omnipresent, he saw what the people were doing while still engaging in conversation with Moses. So to the people, he was silent, okay? But he was still mindful of those who belong to him. And David said in the book of Psalms, he asked God, what is man that you are mindful of us? That simply means that when God has you in a silent season, just know that his eyes are still on you. His eyes are still on you. And he expects you to do the exact same thing that he has taught you up until that point of him being silent. Okay? He is still watchful. He is still present. He has not left you. He has not forsaken you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I want to go back to verse 12, where it says, they, where God said, they have turned away quickly. And so because God did not come in the time frame that you wanted him to, you turn back to your old idols. You turn back to your old lifestyle. Do not do that. For the Bible says that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Wait for God to come. Wait for God to show up because he's going to show up. We just don't know the when and we don't know the how. But what we do know is that he will show up. And so that simply means if God has taught you that you should be reading the word for an hour and praying for an hour, continue to do that until he shows up. OK, if God has taught you um, to worship him at 12 in the morning and you haven't been hearing him, he hasn't been answering you still do that. Because even though God may not answer you in the time frame that you would like him to or in the time frame you think that he would, consistency in the spirit realm is key. It's key. It's just like going to the gym, okay? You don't want to start off strong and then you slack off because then now 
you make it a little bit harder for yourself to get back on track. It's the same thing with the things of the spirit. You want to make sure that you keep that consistent, that consistency and that momentum going. Okay. So the prophetic word is simply this. For those of you who are going into a new season and you may find within that season that there's a season within a season where God is silent, still do what Papa has taught you to do. Still read your word, still praise him because he is still good. Still worship him, still pray to him, still seek his face, still rely on the Holy Spirit for his help because God is watching all of that. He's watching all of that. And again, because he's omnipresent, we see that while he was engaging in conversation with Moses, he still had his eyes on his people, watching them, giving Aaron their earrings and jewelry, all just to create an idol out of gold. Do not go back to the former things. God says in Isaiah, behold, he's doing a new thing. Trust that the things that he has taught you up until this point, they matter. They matter. And he sees you. And I'll end it with this. The Holy Spirit wants me to share this. Um, I was in Dallas uh, this past weekend. And um, just this, you know, I forgot my deodorant. <laughs> and I forgot my deodorant. And... Um, I realized that I did the day of, and I'm like, wow, okay, dang. Um, I forgot my deodorant, and um, I had it in mind the very next morning to go to Target and to get, you know, just those small travel size deodorants. Well, um, mind you, in the suitcase, I looked on the side of the suitcase where I knew I would have packed it because the other side had all of my clothes, just nothing but clothes on the other side. And so I saw the one side where I would have put my put my deodorant in, things like that. It was empty, like my deodorant was not there. You guys, tell me why the next morning, literally like as I'm in the bathroom and I'm like, okay, God, like I need to go to Target. I'm gonna ask my friend if she wants to come with me. I need to buy a trouble size deodorant. I went to my suitcase and my deodorant that I thought I left, which I did leave in Georgia, appeared in my suitcase. And when I saw it, I'm like, Wait a minute, God, I know I checked this yesterday and this part of the suitcase was completely empty. And when I picked it up, I'm like, Papa, thank you. Thank you so much. And so the miraculous sign in that is that God literally brought my deodorant to me. OK, it may not seem like a big deal to some people, but we read in the Bible, miraculous signs and wonders. You guys, the deodorant was not in my hotel room before that happened. OK, literally, it appeared in the same exact spot I checked before where it wasn't there. And the next morning, my deodorant was there. And I cried on the bed. I sat on the bed and I began to tear up and I cried. And I'm like, God, like, this is a reminder that you see me. And every minor detail that may not be a huge thing for us, God sees it as important enough for him to step in. Even in times in which we didn't ask him to. And so I pray that that encourages somebody, like, continue doing what God has you to do. Continue to seek him. Continue to rely on Jesus Christ. Continue to seek the Holy Spirit's help. Continue to praise him because he is still good and worthy despite what you're going through. Keep up the consistency. Keep up the momentum because I promise you consistency matters in the realm of the spirit. Again, it's just like going to the gym. Keep up that consistency. And lastly, I'll leave you with another example, which is how I knew that the deodorant um, uh, example was literally of God. When I used to work at Amazon in 2022, um, I was just like ready to leave Amazon, all of that. And so I got some oatmeal from McDonald's. I know. Yeah. But um, and then I had two water bottles. And so after I ate my breakfast, you know, my hours were like seven to six to so like 11 hours we were there at Amazon working and um, 
when I drank my water, some of my water, I had it in mind. I said, okay, let me save this because these two water bottles need to last me the whole entire 11 hours that I'm there. And so as I'm walking into the building, I got to my station. I looked in my bag because I wanted to get more water for myself. And then I noticed that both of the water bottles are full. But one of them were was filled to the brim. And that was the water bottle that I drunk out of. And I'm like, wait, did I mistakenly took a water bottle from my car? So not really believing what I had initially thought, I waited until the end of my shift, went into my car, did not find any other water bottle in my car. You guys, God filled up my water bottle to the brim. To the brim. And guess what I did? You guessed it. I cried, okay? Because in that moment, I'm like, God, you see me. And again, I didn't ask him to do that. It was such a minor detail for me. But he does stuff like that for me, at least, to remind me, Nichelle, I still see you. I still care about you. And I'm with you. So I pray that this encourages someone when you are in a silent season God still expects you to operate as you would when he wasn't silent. Why? Because he is still mindful of you and he is still watching over you and he's watching you closely. Okay, let us pray. Dear Almighty King, we thank you, God, so much for your word. Thank you, God, for this encouragement, dear God. I pray that this blesses someone just to be reminded, dear God, that when we are when we are in seasons in which you are silent, I ask, dear God, that we will be reminded to continue doing what you taught us to do. Help us not to be like the Hebrews in the Bible, to where when they realized, dear God, that you were silent, that they went back to their former ways, dear God. You are doing a new thing in the earth, and you're doing a new thing in our lives, dear God. Help us to continue to seek your face, praise you, worship you, dear God, because you're still worthy of the praise, Almighty King. And so we thank you and we give you all the honor, glory, and praise in Jesus' mighty and matchless name that we pray. Amen. And amen. Well, thank you guys so much for joining me. I pray that you were blessed by this word and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.